Now, at the weekend, there was another uh, series of Premier League games. The games are really coming thick and fast for uh, players, particularly Premier League players. And a remarkable uh, fact from the weekend was uh, that only one team who'd played in Europe uh, in midweek, and I think there were six altogether, or maybe more, actually, uh, only one team in the English uh, Premier League won. And that team was Leicester. They won uh, 3-0. All the others uh, failed to win. And I think there are signs that um, the amount of games players have been asked to play uh, is taking its toll. But we'll find out because we're joined now by John Giles uh, to discuss the weekend. John, uh, we start with uh, the football, obviously, um, and uh, maybe the Manchester Derby is a good place to start um, yeah. because not much happened. Uh, no. It was a terrible match uh, and uh, barely a contest in any meaningful sense of the word at all. No, it was very, very poor. I mean, considering it's a derby, maybe because the crowd wasn't there. Uh, but even so, even make an allowance for that, it was very, very timid, yes. to say the least. I think Roy Keane was saying it afterwards, wasn't he? You know, the players coming off were hugging each other and being friendly with each other. Yeah. Uh, now, and he said, in his time, of course, it, that, that never happened. No. Uh, and I can understand that. But, it, 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 yeah, it seemed to be both sides setting for a draw. I mean, that's the way it looked to me. Yeah, and you, or, or, uh, uh, to make the same point in a different way, um, neither side wanting to lose and maybe yeah. being afraid of losing. Yeah. In, in, let's just go to Manchester City first, John, because yeah. we have to, uh, uh, for me it's a stretch, but we have to acknowledge, um, uh, and it's no stretch to acknowledge this, that Guardiola has done a really good job at Manchester City. He, you know, he's won two league titles, and the, the, the one he won, what, two years ago now, was actually uh, extraordinary. He broke the points yeah. record, their, the intensity of the play, uh, the skill with David Silva, Aguero, uh, De Bruyne, Sterling. Um, they were marvellous. And Liverpool uh, pip, uh, were pipped to one point behind them. Liverpool were pretty good as well. That, yeah. that team, that work ethic, that intensity, um, and of course a couple of the players, David Silva and Aguero in particular, missing. Uh, where yeah. has it gone, John? They, they don't really press the ball anything like the intense way they used to. No, but they, there again, I mean, you go to the players, you know, you mentioned two players, yeah. Aguero and Silva, there was company, yeah. uh, Ferrandino is not the same as he was. No. Nope. So that's, that, that's four players, I mean, that, he, that he hasn't replaced, very difficult to replace them, but he hasn't replaced them. Yeah. So it's the same with any team, you know, the, 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 once, once those players go, are you going to replace them with, the, with, with players just as good? It's very difficult to do so. Uh, but there was, I mean, they're not doing the pressing game as they, as they were, which was 50% of their game. Uh, certainly on Saturday, uh, they didn't do that at yeah. all. So it was, it was like watching two poor teams playing, um, yes. setting them for a draw. You yeah. know, that's the way it was. There was no, there was no intensity in it. There, there, was, there was no chances. To, uh, and it was like two poor sides, which they were on the day, two, two poor teams. There was yeah. nothing in it. Uh, City have gone uh, backwards. They bought um, a few players, uh, Diaz. The uh, centre half they bought, uh, Ruben Diaz. They paid sixty-five million to Benfica. They bought a lot of bad central defenders from ben from Benfica and other Portuguese clubs. He doesn't look much of a player at all. Stones, John Stones, is back in the team, having had you know almost a year uh, when he couldn't really get a game uh, because he was making unforced errors. He didn't look like a real defender. He's back in the team now. Fernandinho as a midfield player. Uh, he doesn't really have the legs, John, to do that no. job anymore, does he? No. No. Uh, there, there, what's the lad at the back you call him? Uh, uh, Diaz. Never uh, 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 Ruben yeah. Diaz. Yeah. Well, I haven't seen enough of him, Eamon. No, yeah. I, I, see, I couldn't say whether he's good or whether he's bad. I haven't seen enough of him. The funny thing with City, they haven't conceded a goal for five games. Yeah. Eamon. Yeah, that's the that's the. Uh, uh, now they haven't they've done that right, but the other half that they were doing well. Yeah. Yeah, they haven't done it. They haven't done it at all. Now Aguero was missing. Aguero was another. You know, the, the, the great players that they had. You can't replace. Well, they haven't replaced them. I mean, no, let's put haven't. it that way. And 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 that's it. I mean, Neves. The, 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 sorry, what's Diaz? The lad yeah. at the back. 
I, I haven't made my mind up about them. I haven't seen enough of them. Yeah. Um, to be honest. Okay. Uh, but the City are not the team that they were. There's no doubt about that. Um, yeah, well, yeah. I've, I've made my mind up about him. And it, he's not worth 65 million. Um, he's a bit of a stick. In midfield, Fernandinho and Rodri. Now, I liked Rodri when he was at Atletico Madrid. When he first came to Manchester, I thought he was useful. But now he looks hopeless, really. Well, he's useful. He's useful, then. Yeah, but he's, yeah. not, he's not a midfield player. He's an A to B man, I call him, you know, when yeah. they're passing the ball. A to B. I've never, I've never seen him hit a through ball yet. No. He doesn't score goals. No. Uh, you know, so he, he's just okay. He's A to B. He gives it A to B, and he doesn't do much wrong. But he's not. Uh, he's not David Silva. You know, who can create goals, score goals, and and do all the, the great things he did. Yeah. He's just okay. Now, uh, they're clearly not going to challenge Liverpool, are they, John? Manchester City for the title? No, neither Manchester City or Manchester United, I mean. Yeah, no, you know, Manchester United is just as bad in a different way. Yeah, you know they had Pogba back in the team now, who didn't play during the week, and he yes. did, he, again he did nothing. I'm not blaming everything on him, but it's but it's a, it's a, it's a sign of the times for Manchester United that, it, that the, his his agent can can release statements previously against him yeah. if, if just before an important match. Yeah. And nothing done about it. Yeah, that, that and was... Pogba's back in the team again. You know, well, he didn't make the statement, but that's his agent. And he's, they're responsible for each other in, 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 what they, in what they released to the papers. Yeah, and, and I it, just it, have to point out, John, the game in question was the Champions League game against Leipzig uh, yeah. last uh, Wednesday, I think, or Tuesday or Wednesday. And yeah. just before the game, uh, Riola, his agent, uh, said his time at Manchester United was up. It was yeah. finished. And that's a direct quote. Now, Pogba uh, didn't contribute... But as you say, he should be dealing with his agent. It raises a question also about uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer that an agent and a player can behave in that way with no consequences. In fact, the consequence was he was a starter against Manchester City. Exactly. So there's, there's no... You wouldn't know what was going on. I mean, you, know, you couldn't imagine that happening in Ferguson's time. You couldn't imagine it happening at Liverpool. No. You know, it just wouldn't happen. And this has been going on for like four years or so with the, with the Pogba situation. And it's, it's still there. So yeah, You, know, you made for, a point, John, a few weeks ago, it's worth making again, that if Pogba was offered to Jurgen Klopp for nothing, mm. he wouldn't take him. I don't think he would, Eamon. He would see, like this, Liverpool have a, a spirit going and a, and a professional way of going, which is, which, is, which is the way all successful teams do. And to, to throw him in there, no way. No. Um, you just wouldn't. Because no. I think Pogba is it's just he's a type of player that you can't handle. He's a talented lad, but you just can't handle him. He goes his own way. Whatever he's doing, he goes his own way. That, that's not how you build a team. You know, Building a team is, is when, you, when everybody's together and they're fighting for each other and doing the best thing for the team. Yeah. That's what you do. You can't say that about Manchester United. And, yeah. and, and, and they're living with it, which is... Which is Excusing the the, yeah. the, 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 the behaviour of Pogba and his agent. Now, one player impressed me hugely, John, on Saturday uh, against City. And he's impressed me before, but never quite as much. And that's McTominay, midfield player. He, I just thought he was a box-to-box player, a digger, put his foot in, win his t- fair share of tackles, and do what you call the A to B passing. He did an awful lot more than that on Saturday. He was outstanding on with the ball at his feet, imaginative passes. He did play box to box. He won a lot of balls. And I thought in a game where they were desperately trying to uh, find a spark, he was absolutely outstanding. And I hadn't really noticed him. I've been watching him for two years. I haven't twigged him. Uh, I don't suppose you did either on Saturday. Well, I thought he was okay, eh? I mean, he's played better than he normally plays. I think he is a box to box. I think one thing about him, he's a goer. He he's is a, a goer. trier. Yep. He does everything for the team. I yep. don't think he's, he's. I mean, if, if, if Pogba had his attitude, eh? I mean, yep. now we'd be talking about a player. Yes. Yep. Right? Now, I think, he, I think he's limited. I think he played well on Saturday. He, he does his best, but I think he's limited in being a top class player. Uh, Midfield player, yeah. but, but he's a good team player. I mean, you could you, you can certainly depend on him for his effort and his goal in the team. 
So, I mean, what, what you need is somebody alongside him to be able to... I mean, if Pogba was doing his stuff in the way that he should be doing it, it would be a good partnership. Yep. But that's not happening. It's only happening on... It's one-sided okay. in that situation. Now, uh, we're going to talk about VAR later on, John, because we have a disagreement on the question. But in this game, VAR showed where it can be extremely useful. Uh, Marcus Rashford uh, got in uh, behind... Uh, Kai Walker, uh, and he was brought down, uh, and it looked like a penalty. They went back, checked it. It was a yard offside. VAR at his best, working. Yeah. So I'll just yeah. note that because we're going to talk a bit more about VAR. But I want to talk yeah. to you first about um, uh, the other, I suppose, big game, or for me, the big another big game was Liverpool away to Fulham. They didn't raise a leg jump for 45 minutes, did they? No, they never got going, I mean, you know, whether uh, they were tired or it, about, it, it yeah. happened. Yeah, it, it happens. Uh, you know, Henderson was on after the match and he was very, very good, I mean, he was very very honest and, and clear yes, in what was, he said. Yeah. He said, we didn't get started, we didn't do it, we, can't, we don't know why, which, which does happen, I mean, from, yes. from time to time. Very seldom with Liverpool because it's such a good team. But it just happened. And I must say, you'd have to say too, Fulham were excellent, Damon. Yes. You know, they took advantage of they it. Did, there's no yeah. doubt. I mean, there's other teams that, like Liverpool wouldn't be playing as well, but they didn't. Have, but they took advantage of it. And, and, and with the better, there could have been one, what, two, maybe two up at half time yeah. uh, in, in that particular match. But they did take advantage of it. There's no doubt. But it happens, Damon, from time to time. You know, yeah. it, it, they just... Like Henderson was saying, well, I, I can't explain it. Yes. You just weren't up for it, and the, and 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 obviously the other team, the other team was, and they did pick it up after half time as we would expect them to do. But yeah. it does happen. Yeah, it does uh, happen. The high line in the first half, John raised its uh, ugly head again. Carvalho, the Fulham forward, had two good chances to score before they did score, and uh, Allison saved both of them. But the yeah. high line is still a problem for Liverpool, uh, particularly when there are back four changes uh, and we're not sure who's in charge. Uh, yeah. that was That's an issue still for Liverpool. But it is, especially when teams get at them, I mean, like, like yeah. the, the very few teams get at them. Yes. You know, because they're so good. But they weren't good on, uh, uh, on, on the weekend. And Fulham did get at them. Yeah. And, 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 and it showed up. But it also showed up for Liverpool what a good, what a good goalkeeper means to you. I mean, yes. You know, he made two fantastic saves, really good saves that yeah. c- could have put Fulham two ahead. You know, so so he does. He's not often called to do his stuff, but like all good goalkeepers, he does it when he has to do it. He does, and, he and that's, he, that's he's not showy thing. in any way, is he? No, he's, nothing at all. No, yeah. he gets on with the job. There's yeah. no there's no messing about with him in any way whatsoever. He's top top class, and he showed that. So Fulham, Fulham could have gone. I mean, they might have gone two or three ahead actually, at, at half-time, which could have put it away from Liverpool. Yeah, now, there was a VAR incident in that match, John. Mm. It was yeah. the tackle by Fabinho um, on uh, Cavalier, I think. And yes. it, I didn't think it was a penalty. Uh, yeah. In fact, I thought no more about it, and I was surprised, as indeed was Fabinho, when it went to VAR. But it did go to VAR. Yeah. Uh, and VAR showed it in such a way that Graeme Souness, who was in the studio for Sky, Graeme thought it was a penalty. Now, I have huge mm. respect for Graeme's opinions. Mm. Uh, I looked at it again. I still didn't think it was a penalty. Tell me what you thought about that uh, incident. But when, when, when in our normal play, ordinary play, Eamon, mm. I didn't think anything of it. No. When it went to VAR, I thought it was a penalty. Yeah. Well, that's, 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 that's my opinion on it, because... It, it didn't look at. I, I, I didn't think anything of it. I was I was surprised when it went to VAR because it looked like to me Fabinho got a touch of the ball yeah. and knocked it out on the replay. He didn't. He did get he a touch. Felt, he did get a touch on the ball. No, on the ball he didn't, Damon. He did. He got a touch on no. the on the right the man's right foot, which no. knocked it out. He got a touch on the ball. Well, we're seeing it different ways then. I we thought are. he got well, a touch well, on the ball. Well, there were you different thought, angles. He... I'm convinced there was a touch on the ball. What Graham was arguing was that his standing foot, uh, which he needed to leverage for leverage to get the cross in, uh, was what Fabinho maybe hit first. But well, that's, well it, yeah, it could have 
could well it could have, it could it could well be that he hit the ball. I'm talking about yes. I'm talking about the, the the contact with your man's foot. He might have hit hit the ball after he touched your man's foot. Right. But what Graham was saying, and I'd agree with, is that it 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 it, it took he took his other foot away in the tackle. Yes. Well, what I'm yeah. saying is uh, not different, but uh, a little more nuanced, which is mm. when you slow mo an incident like that. You distort the reality. It is an optical uh, illusion. When you well, slow mo, well, it distorts it and tells it as well. I mean, I, no, I, I know the handballs particularly. Definitely, when you slow, when you slow them it down. It, yes, it's it different. does. Particularly on the handballs. In in this one, it was slowed down to show exactly what happened. With the handballs, I would agree with you. With that one, I don't agree with you. Now, it, it, during the ordinary play, I didn't think it was a penalty. Right. But that's what far. That's what far does. Okay. And on the VAR, I thought it was an ordinary play. I didn't think it was. Right. Now, Liverpool's equaliser, uh, about 10 minutes from the end, mm. uh, free kick uh, outside the box, mm. uh, and the wall was formed, the, t- the kick was taken, and a handball was given. Now, mm. I didn't think that was a penalty because the guy had his back uh, to the ball. He wasn't deliberate. There was no intent there mm. to handle it, but there's a new rule now, yep. which is a bit unclear. Um, if if your silhouette of your body is wrong or something, they can give a penalty. So, yep. what did you did you think it was a penalty? Yes, on the new rules, Eamon, I did. Now, I don't agree with the new rules. What are, I, what are the new rules? <laughs> well, the new rules, I don't, I don't know. Whatever it was, by, 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 by the standard new rules, it was penalty. What I would criticise the, the, the player for, and two of them actually, was for jumping in the way in which they did. I mean, right. Do you know what I mean? I think now, the players should know now in the rules nowadays, and I think they, 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 they could have jumped, Damon, right? Yeah. From the position that they were in. But both of them had turned their backs away. Yeah. From the kick, do you know? Do you know what I'm saying? I do. No, like years ago, that wouldn't have been a penalty. Okay, it was accidental and, and the various things. But yes. nowadays, the players should know the rules. And if you're if you're in the wall and you're going to jump, right? Actually, both of them were sideways to yep. the ball. Do you know what I mean? The big lads jump, jump, just jump, jump, jump straight up, Eamon. You know what I mean? Wouldn't it be better, John, if we went back to the way it used to be that handball? All depended on intent. If yes. if it yes. was intent, it's a penalty. Mm. If it was yes. unintentional, it's not a penalty. Yes. Wouldn't that yeah. be better? Definitely, I mean. That right. was, but again, that's the interpretation that the referees or whoever it is have brought into the game. Yeah. You know, we can blame VAR for it. We can say VAR, VAR, VAR is nothing. It's the, it, it's, the, it's the interpretation of the rules, I mean, yeah. that's changed. Definitely. I mean, it should, it should be that now, in my opinion, go back to the old days. Was it intentional? Was it not intentional for a penalty? It's it's it was quite simple. Now there were controversies over that at times, as well. But the, the the new rules have changed it. I mean, we saw that a couple of weeks ago. A player went out left back one of the matches, hand behind his back, yeah, and it, it, it hit him. Yeah, yeah. But that's 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 that should be changed. That should never have been okay in in the game as 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 we know, Eamon. Right. Always. Well, you know, I, it's just wrong. Yeah. I'm going to say now that I think VAR should be scrapped because it's ruining the game. Uh, mm. And I never thought I'd say that because I was I was a huge, hugely in favour of it. Um, now, let's well, I, talk... I, would dis- I would disagree with you yeah, there. I'll that. tell you why. I'll tell you why yeah, yeah. it will happen. If you scrapped VAR, yeah. right, and see, well, in, in our day, we didn't have the television there to show us what was right or wrong. What you'll find, it will cause more controversy, in my, my opinion, because there will be incidents where the BBC or Sky or whoever's doing the match can show exactly what happened. There will be obvious offsides, there will be obvious, there'll be obvious handballs, there'll be obvious fouls that they will show us and say, look what happened there. We'll still be shown what could have happened. Yeah. Okay. You know, times have no. changed. We've got, we've got the, we've got the, 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 the BBC. All these things now, Eamon, They can show it. They show it to us. Yeah. They show it to us, and it's, it's like the, you know, was the ball over the line at one stage? We couldn't tell. 
Now, now, if somebody fouls somebody and it's an obvious foul, you'll say, you, you and I would agree. And they say, well, if we had VAR, that would have been given. But yeah, that's what's going to happen. There will are... be more chaos, yeah. in my opinion, yeah. if we scrap VAR and we can still show what went wrong. Like there was the before VAR, I mean, there was an incident in a West Ham match. I remember seeing it where it was, it was something obvious and the referee didn't give it. But you know the way they used to have the screens up on the edge of the, yes. the corners of the ground, yeah. right? The one team was complaining, and they were saying to the referee, have a look up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, It's quite obvious that it was a handball. Have a look up there. Okay. And, of course, the referee didn't give it. But that's what would happen, in my opinion, if, if, they take that, if we take VAR out of it now. There will be incidents in the game I mean, where the, there's cameras from the television companies can show us exactly what, what went wrong. Okay, I moderate. I don't want to get rid of VAR. I want the incidences when it can be used to be changed. In other words... I agree with that entirely. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's the way... It's, it's, what's happened yeah. with VAR is the interpretations yes. now, right? Of the, and first of all, the rules have been changed. The yes. handball rule has been changed. Yes. Yeah. Well, who changed that? VAR didn't change that. No. No. Somebody changed it. Probably the referees. I don't know. Somebody changed it. Yeah. So we have to blame them and let them get it right, and then VAR will look after itself. Okay. Let's talk about the positive. And there right. is a really great positive. Get back to football. We get back to football. Then. Yeah. <laughs> There's a real positive story, John. Southampton. Uh, yes. Have they're in the top four? Uh, as I am talking to you, they're fourth. They're in the Champions League place now. It's very congested, obviously up there. Yeah. But uh, the coach is Ralph Hasenhutel. He's uh, Austrian. Uh, he's been there for uh, two years, two and a bit years, and he was the coach when they lost nine nothing at home. I yeah. think it was to Leicester. Yes. Um, yes. And he, everyone thought he, this guy must be gone. He's done a, a fantastic job, hasn't he? Jim? John and we, oh, yeah. we we both saw them this weekend three uh, 0 against Sheffield United, but they've had some great results against bigger teams as well. And he looks like he has a really really good side, despite the the fact that Theo Walcott's in it. Yeah, yeah well, he's, he's probably playing better now than he's ever played, Damon. Yeah, but they're very good. I mean, they lost to Manchester United. You know, last week haven't been too up. Yeah. Uh, but 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 they're very very well organised. They, they they play well. You know they, they they're attractive to watch, uh, but effective, which is the main thing. Yeah, he's done a huge job, Amy. He, as you say, last year it's only about oh, just over twelve months <coughs> since Leicester gave him that hiding. Yeah, and it looked like he was a gunner. Yeah, you know nine but, nil but, at home is pretty nine nil at home. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Uh, like he's done now, he's very good. They they, they play they play well. They are well organised. They're scoring the goals. They're, they're, they're doing the snow. He's done a big job with them. Okay. Big job. Now, another good story. A, a, a coach you've always liked and never turned on him when other people were turning on him uh, is Jose Mourinho. And Spurs are top of the league. Uh, and really, uh, they got a 1-1 draw away to Crystal Palace, which on the face of it isn't a great result. But Palace are a tough proposition, aren't they, John? Particularly at home at Sellers Park. Yeah, the, well, the, yeah, they're very, very again a very, very well organised team, Eamon. Uh And Spurs, Spurs, when Spurs got in front, the only thing I was disappointed with them, Eamon, in the second half, they, they took their foot off the gas, as they say. Yeah, do you know what I mean? They, 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 they gave, they gave the ball to to and said, really, it looked like anyway, we're going to defend for the rest of the game. Yes, that's what it looked like. And and of course they paid the price. You know, they, they Fulham got, oh, sorry, uh, Palace got a, a free kick. Uh, and uh, Larish, I think, could have done better. It wasn't yeah. easy for him, could have done better. But then afterwards, he, it, it's amazing with uh, Mourinho. He said, no, he's okay. He's the best He's the best goalkeeper in the Premier League. <laughs> but I wouldn't be too sure about that. But they did take the foot off the gas, I mean, they were, they were winning, they were comfortable, I thought. Uh, could have gone for the next one, didn't, and looked like they were going to defend it out till the end. Uh, and it just went against them. So I, I, that, that was it was it was it was disappointing to see that because he's done a huge job as we know they're up there at the top of the league and uh, you know he's really really in control of the situation there. Yep. Now uh, Leeds, John, West Ham Friday night. Um, yeah. And this is an amazing Leeds team, <laughs> uh, yeah. and the coach has done you know uh, Bielsa. Uh, he's done 
an amazing job, really. Uh, but they do tire at the end of the matches. I talked to you about this last week, mm. and I thought they tired again. West Ham beat them 2-1 in the end. Yeah. Uh, Leeds haven't gone in front. But you kinda ha- you've kind of been looking at this Leeds team because you love them. Uh, even in the championship, you were watching them. And they have a fatal flaw, don't they, John? Yeah, it does. Well, I, I, last, well, last year, obviously, got promotion. But the year before, when they played Derby I'm in, 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 in a playoff match, it's like a discipline. I find it amazing. The job he's done by Elsa is, 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 is extraordinary. But there's still a lack of discipline there. I mean, yeah. Like the two, the two free, the two Set goals they lost. Against. Yeah. Yeah. Were, 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 were free kicks. Yeah. That, first of all, shouldn't have been given away. But they're marking up. I think there's more concentration on the players when they're marking a player, I mean, to be pulling and pushing them. Yes. Rather than marking them. Yeah. Because once they're, you're pulling and pushing a player, I mean, and to get away from you, You've no chance of catching up with them. No. And the two the two free kicks were similar yep. in what they did. There were, there were free, actually free headers yep. in a team where there were large portions of the game. These were by far the better team to West Ham. Yeah. Now, now, they haven't got a goal scorer as well. But you, well, obviously and if they're you going to stay up, goal, John. That's what Leeds fans will want to know. Yeah, I think they will, Eamon. I still think they'll do enough to win. My, like they play... They, and the general play, they shouldn't have been beaten against West Ham. Yeah. But it was two free kicks that did them. In the, in the general play, I thought it was a better team. Yeah. So there'll be matches that they will get away with the, with the, with the lack of discipline, Eamon, and do, and do their stuff. You know, I think they'll finish around mid-table. Okay. I, I think they might finish lower than that. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll, t- we'll see how that works out. Just a couple of other things. And there's a question from a, a listener that I'd like you to... Um, answer as well um, Everton Chelsea John now mm. I think we both have a high regard for Frank Lampard both as a person as a player and indeed as a coach uh, the way he mm. conducts himself and Chelsea have been a team many people thought would be contending but they're not yeah. ready for it John this game I think showed and he said afterwards I've got a lot of young players mm. Havertz is one Tammy mm. Abraham Mason Mount I have a lot of young players, he said, they're on a learning curve and it doesn't happen overnight. He didn't have a go at them, he was just pointing out. And the other thing is the Everton team missing a number of players. Seamus Coleman out, Dinya, the left back, very, very good player, out of the team. And yet, they got a good result. Uh, And their goalkeeper, Pickford, is a bit crazy as well. But Everton beat them. Uh, on the night but you can't there's no shortcut to experience in the Premier League is there? No I thought Everton were back to their best Damon yeah. deserved to win Yeah, I thought Frank was wrong to say what he said really? after the match yeah. yes he's wrong Damon okay. what he was saying in effect look give these lads a, a chance give them a break Yeah, you know you don't give lads a break Damon right. you know you do the job who's to say they're too you know, like I, I think I, I think it was a negative in, because when, play, when players read that themselves, which they will, it takes the expectancy from them. Yeah. Damon. You know, okay, they're young lads, but so what? Yeah. What's wrong with expecting them to do it better? Like I thought he was making a little bit of an excuse for himself. Look, I've, it, like it, it was. I like Frank Lampard. I think he's done a big job there. Yeah. But you know, expect it of the players. Okay, he's got some young players. He's got experienced players as well. But they've shown they've shown in big matches, I mean, that they can do it, right? What's wrong with doing it every week? Well, I would say, John, in the Premier League, Mason Mount, Tammy Abraham, Havertz looks a real thoroughbred, really. But he's a German. He's only a kid. He's nineteen twenty, and he's still getting used to the intensity of the Premier League. But I think he's going to be an amazing player in the fullness of time. And I do think you need to learn your business, especially when there are other young players around you. James, yeah, the right back. I'm not, I mean, I'm not, dis- I'm not disputing that, but you don't mm. say it publicly. Okay, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's, 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 like it's, it's saying, well, we, in other words, don't expect us to win it this year. Well, yeah, I think that's... You know what I mean? Okay. Like, don't, okay, don't, okay, you keep that to yourself, though, in my opinion, as a manager, Eamon. Okay. You know, you keep the pressure on the, on, on the young players. You expect them to be better. You expect them to do it. That's yes. all. 
I mean, and I like Frank, and I think he's done. I think he's done a big job there. But I, I, I thought Everton were first of all back to where they were at the start of the season. I mean, yeah. that attitude was great. They out, they, they outfought Chelsea, totally outplayed them in my opinion. That was a bad day for Chelsea. Yeah, it was a bad day for Chelsea. And just, but okay, you have a bad day. And you, okay, young players do learn. Okay, but just to acknowledge, in the case of Everton, despite injuries, um, hmm? you know. Um, and James Rodriguez was missing big, big player for Everton. He's been a very good signing. He wasn't fit. Uh, two full backs out. Uh, Carlo Ancelotti, great coach. Uh, he adjusted the team. He really played four and a half. He played two of them at full back. Uh, and really uh, very experienced football man, coach. He's won everything, including the Champions League. And having someone like that at Everton is a big, big deal. Isn't it? I mean, they're pretty. Oh, yeah, he's a great lad, Damien. Players. Yeah, yeah. He never criticises the players. He gets on with the job. He's not. He doesn't try to publicise himself in any way. And he, he got them. I, I think what happened to whatever they made a very good start to the season, Damien. Yeah. You know, and I, again, I think they, they took their foot off the off the off the off the accelerator. Yeah. And you know, it happens with players. Well, no, we're doing. But now they were back. They, they, they just outplayed, outfought Chelsea. I think that's what Frank would be disappointed with, really. That they out they outfought them. Right. They got back to where they're doing their business, getting on with it. It's like Liverpool didn't in the first half, and then you pay the price for it. I mean, it's, it's attitude is everything, and I think they took the foot off the gas early on after a good start, to Everton, and it was back in a big way uh, at the weekend. Now, um, looking at the Premier League table this morning, John, right down in the relegation zone or pretty close to it, Arsenal, and oh, yeah. they got beat one 0 at home by Burnley last night. Uh, and Shaka, uh, an old friend of ours who we've talked about many, many times, was sent off. He should be sent out of the country, John. He's a disaster, isn't he? Yeah, he should have been out of the club ages ago, I mean, yeah, It's a bit like the Pogba situation in a different yeah. way. You know, once, yeah. a t- once a player's doing what he's doing and not doing what he should be doing, you get him out and you know they're not going to change. Yeah. You know, Shaq is not going to change. He, he went, he, he, he behaved himself there for a while. Yeah. Maybe being sent out of the club when he walked off the pitch, swearing at the at the supporters and that yeah. at that stage, and they put him back in. And Atata, Atata seemed to believe in him, but these guys don't change. The leopard doesn't change his spots, Eamon. No. And he's going to do that at some stage. And to be honest, even when he's not doing, not misbehaving, I don't think he contributes an awful lot to the team. No. Anyway. No, he doesn't. You know, and a lot of their forwards, um, expensive forwards. Um, Aubameyang hasn't played since he got that new contract. Mm. And he finished off last night, um, scored a known goal. And mm. I'm glad for Burnley. I like uh, Sean Dyche. I think he's done a yeah. fantastic job with Burnley over the years. Uh, and the board are messing with his head. A mm. final uh, thing, John, and it's a very important thing, a question from one of our listeners, Kevin uh, Doherty. And here it is. Mm. It's about Gareth Bale and Tottenham. What do you yeah. think of Gareth Bale and what he has to offer Tottenham? And the second part of it is, given that Mourinho has now found a winning formula, do you think he will continue to leave Bale on the bench, even if he's fit to play? Um, I think he's got a... I think with Mourinho, I mean, he's got a team there now who believes in him. Yeah. You know, they're signing on to what he does, they say in the game. Now, they're signing on to what he believes in. Yeah. And he believes in controlling players totally. I think that's why at Manchester United, one of the reasons he didn't do it was because he couldn't control Pogba. Yeah. Right. And I think, at the, if you go back to it, I think it was 2016, I think Woodward made a sign in uh, that, uh, of Pogba. Yeah. I, I don't necessarily think that... I agree with you. Mourinho signed Pogba. No, no, I but I think he had to go along with Woodward and he actually did describe him at the time as a world-class player. Yeah. Right. I don't think he ever believed that uh, with Pogba. So, and I think he thought, well, I'll get a grip of him. He never got a grip of him. Eh? No. And Gareth, then, he, then, he, then he started to insult him and, and, yeah, and, and, all, and all sorts of things. But once you get one that doesn't sign on to what the manager's doing, yeah. you're in trouble. I think with the, if you look at the Spurs players now, I think they believe in everything that he wants them to do. Yeah. And I think he doesn't want to put our friend in, Gareth Bale, uh, yeah. Gareth Bale in, in case it disrupts that. Right. Right? 
I think he will get in the team at some stage. But I, I think he'll know when he gets in the team, he really has to do his stuff. Amy. Yes, yeah. He has to buy in to what yep. uh, Mourinho wants because Mourinho's not going to be impressed by a big name, no. which he is a big name. Uh, and again, I wouldn't be too sure if it was Mourinho's deal that brought, that brought Gareth Bray to, to, the, to the club. Right. That, that's the way I see it. But I think the players that he has on the pitch have bought in and are really, really playing yeah. for Mourinho. And, that's what I think. And on Wednesday night, where are they going? Only Anfield. Yeah. Now, they've yeah. got another injury. Uh, Diogo Jota out for two months, John, with a knee ligament problem, which is unbelievable. He picked it up mm. in the game against Mitchell and the Champions League game. Mm. They didn't even really need to play him. And mm. Matip... Yesterday, not fit to start, which drove Henderson back to the central defensive positions. They are having a terrible run with injuries, John, aren't they? Terrible, Eamon. Yeah, yeah. It, it happens, unfortunately. Um, and luckily enough, they have a big enough panel to cope with it, Eamon. You know, yeah, just and they have cope, they've coped well with it, you know. Yes. I mean, if he puts Henderson, for example, back to centre half, he can do a good job there. Yeah. He can do a good job there. And they get the other, and they got the, 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 the forward players. He can still feel the good team that's capable of beating yeah. Spurs. I think it'll be a terrific match. I really look forward to it. Yeah. I think it'll be a hard match for Liverpool. But he still has a team capable of winning matches, which is, which is, which is, which is a great position to be in, having lost the players that he's lost. I yeah. can't think of another team no. that could lose the players that he's lost and continue to win matches. Okay, John, um, as always, uh, great to talk to you um, and we'll agree to slightly disagree about VAR, <laughs> but about everything else we agree. 